Hello, my friend. My name is Anton from Kernel.com, and today we continue our OpenStack practical series. As discussed in the previous video, today we will take a look how we are getting ready to set up of the OpenStack. Over the course of the few previous videos, we have explained the major building blocks in a sense of why we are building the OpenStack, what are the key services the OpenStack provides, as well as we touched a little bit the services that OpenStack run. Today, we will provide a step-by-step -step plan, which we will start implementing from the next session, so from our next video. And today we'll talk about actually how the deployment process is looking like, what we need to take into account, and uh, in which procedure, in which uh, sequence we will deploy components which are needed for the OpenStack and the OpenStack itself. So let's get started. Ultimately, our plan is uh, consisting out of five steps. The first one is to figure out what storage we are going to use. We'll talk a little bit about each of the steps more in the next uh, slides, but for the time being, you think before start building OpenStack, we need to have up and running storage. So then once we are figuring out which storage we are going to use and how and why, we'll talk about the deployments. So basically, we are making sure that we are bringing to the operation the storage solution that we have chosen. Then we finally move to the choosing the components we're going to then discuss. We are going to install with our OpenStack deployment, figuring out the mode of forward deployment, then actually proceeding with the OpenStack deployment. And once all the steps are completed, we are bringing OpenStack in the operation. So let's take a look. First thing first, storage. As uh, discussed beforehand, we know that OpenStack provides compute services. It can provide two types of services, such as black sto block storage and object storage. So both of them are used in different use case. Object storage is something similar to the AWS S3 service where you store various files um, and can access them, whereas block storage, this is something uh, used to store the volumes of VMs and backups of the VMs. So they are big, um, typically low latency. Um, uh, and the devices uh, volumes which are accessing with the low latency. So therefore, when you're choosing the storage for the OpenStack, you think which services you're going to use and provide. Do you need object storage? Do you need block storage? Do you need BOSS? So take a look on what is existing uh, from this variety and figure out, OK, I need to have, for example, BOSS. Then, we go on to the next step. So the next step is to figure out, OK, uh, if I'm going to deploy both block and object storage, what solutions do I have? What are the commercial solutions exist in the market? What is my budget? Or what is the open source solution or solutions? And uh, figuring out how easy to deploy them, how easy to maintain them, and all other things, you'll figure out uh, what may be the appropriate uh, solution for yourself. Then you shall figure out how performant it shall be. So whether you would like to implement HDD or SDD or NVMe, so all this type of stuff, which volume, which size of the drives you would have. And finally, figuring out what would be the, deploy the deployment options, whether you're going to implement it manually or with some sort of the automation. We'll leave the particular discussion about the choice of the storage for our OpenStack Cloud to the next video. And actually, we will the next five videos, as you could imagine, would be dedicated to each of these steps. So then, once figuring out with all the questions, we are proceeding with the deployment. So we need to prepare the servers. Obviously, in reality, you would be uh, purchasing service with the corresponding drives and uh, deploying them. In our case, as discussed above, we are deploying the hyperconverged cluster with the help of the VMs just to simulate the OpenStack. So we will prepare the VMs in the corresponding way. And uh, we will place uh, storage on that one. We're going to deploy it in the automated way. So we will guide you how we can deploy the storage in the automated uh, leverage and the 
type of the storage that we will be using. So once we are done with the storage, we are progressing with, to the OpenStack itself. So first of all, we need to figure out which version of the OpenStack we are going to deploy, whether this is the latest one, which is to the date Xena, uh, or sorry, Xena, Xena, probably Xena, yes. So, and then uh, we are progressing, uh, or we are going to deploy anything earlier, like Yoto or anything like that. We could also take a look into the, um, or we should actually take a look into which OpenStack services we are going to deploy, whether we're going to deploy the compute, which is NOAA, whether we need also to provide the networking for this, which would be then Neutron, whether we are using the storage services such as Cinder for block storage or Swift for the object storage, whether we like to add uh, heat. So for the automation, whether we need to have the horizon, this I just listed all the so-called OpenStack core services, but OpenStack to the date has more than 60 various services. Do we want to have installed also Doom? Do we want also to have installed uh, load balancer such as Octavia service and uh, many, many others. So we need to specify because depending on which services we are going to deploy, we would need to prepare the corresponding configuration of the services, right? For example, if we talk about the networking part, Neutron, we could deploy Neutron with the help of the Linux bridges. We could deploy the Neutron with the help of the uh, Open v switch, or we could even deploy OVN, which is based on the Open v switch but has a lot of uh, fuzzy advancement. So this is something we need to think before we start actual deployment. And ultimately, yes, also we need to think how we are going to deploy, whether we're going to deploy that manually or in automated way, leveraging any existing products or projects available on the market right now, or relying on the automation that we are going to create ourselves. So once we have figured out all our deployment plans for the OpenStack, we, as it could be easily understandable, would progress with the deployment of the OpenStack. So we are using, as we will be using in our case, automated deployment. So making sure that all the configuration plan for the automation is ready, doing the necessary step for the integration with the OpenStack, uh, sorry, of OpenStack with the storage, because this step is not yet automated in any of the available uh, default um, automation tool that uh, existing on the market. So we'll need to do some extra steps, which we can do either manually or an automated way. We will see uh, when we get to the stage uh, how better we can address this point. And um, once we run the deployment of the OpenStack, it is running. We need to make sure that it's working properly, especially integration with the storage, because it's uh, a little bit of the extra uh, hiccups we will need to do. But testing that we could spin up VM, testing that VM can access internet, testing that a VM has a persistent drive and we can do the migration of the VM between the compute nodes. So we can, and we will talk about the test plan, how you could uh, test the OpenStack deployment for sure. We'll uh, show you within the demos how the stuff would be looking like. And uh, then we are going to the last step, which is bring OpenStack into production. They are, Previous step, more focusing on the functionality of the OpenStack from the perspective whether all our infrastructure components, again, uh, compute nodes, networking, uh, service, storage are working fine. When we talk about the operationalizing of the OpenStack, we need to pay attention to such things such as integrating with uh, IAM, so Identity Access Manager, whether this is built in, in the OpenStack local IAM, whether this is LDAP or any other external services. So this sorts needs to be done. We also need to make sure that when we go to the production that our OpenStack is properly monitored. So we'll talk about what can be monitored, how, and actually at the point we will be building the deployment of our OpenStack, meaning when we will be deploying it in the real network, we'll add the monitoring as a part of the automated rollout of our system. Finally, when all the things are done and we have up and running 
OpenStack, which can provide all the services, which is also providing the corresponding IAM and uh, is monitored. We can open it to other customers, whether it's our internal externals, start using that one. So we have a little bit of pause between this video and the previous one, but we're looking forward to knock out these uh, five videos in the next, uh, hopefully, relatively short period of time. So stay tuned and we'll get back to you soon since next step, we actually start talking about the particular storage that we are going to use, choosing, explaining why, explaining the parameters of the storages, then deploying the storage, then again, talk about the open stack and how we're going to roll out with the automated way, rolling that out and Operella Shiden, their open stack. Thank you very much for your attention today and talk to your thing.